This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Be here until yeah. We're here until midnight tonight, ladies and gentlemen. As Lady. I live and breathe, the face we haven't wait seen. Minute, for wait a minute, while. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I pushed the wrong button, folks. I pushed the wrong button. I pushed the wrong button. I pushed the wrong button. I am. Oh God, I just can't stand myself anymore. Okay, all right. Okay, where are we gonna? Okay, so we want. A picture of Larry Bubbles Brown, and then we want him. Ladies and gentlemen, out to California, we go with Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. This show is coast to coast. Yeah, and as you may remember in the last episode, Larry was going to go in for his operation. How'd it go, Larry? (laughs) Well, it either went great or I canceled it. (laughs) Yeah, see, we were doing this about a couple minutes after we ended the last one, so... (laughs) We won't know till like no, next week from when this one runs how he how it turned out, and it could very well be that there was nothing to turn out because Larry, being the ultimate coward that he is, and I, I'm not, I'm exactly the same screaming coward that you are. Okay, uh, really doesn't want the operation. No, have I you, don't. Have no. you ever had any other medical procedures? Where you had to go into the hospital and be put out? Yeah, I had my thyroid removed. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. What, what, what was that wrong with your thyroid? That was thyroid cancer. You had thyroid cancer? Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, uh, uh, and what were the effects of thyroid cancer? Uh, they found it by accident. Looking back on it, I wouldn't have had the surgery, but uh, they did, and I had a pinched nerve. They did an x-ray. They said, we've noticed something on your thyroid. They took a biopsy and it turned out to be thyroid cancer. And then later I found out a third of the population has thyroid cancer and doesn't know it. And you live with it and you die of something else. So, yeah, but they pushed me to get that done, which they did. And, uh, you just take thyroid medication to this day. I have to take a thyroid pill every morning. Yeah, I take I, I take one. I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. the most uh, common drug in the world. Yeah, yeah, I take it too. I, you know, because I had underactive thyroid or something that had gone underactive. Right, right. Uh, do you remember what your dose is? It's like twelve or something, one hundred twenty or one twenty-five. That's what I'm on. Yeah, yeah. I could probably stand a little more because I'm always tired and lightheaded and things like that. And I think it might be the thyroid. You know. yeah. This is what all people talk about when they get together, folks. They talk about their operation. How long ago was that operation on thyroid? That was 08. 08. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So thyroid cancer. So you're a cancer survivor, huh? I guess technically I am, yeah. What do we do? Did we say thank you for your service? What do we do <laughs> about that? Although in Finland, they don't even ca- categorize thyroid cancer as a cancer. So. What would what they categorize it as? It's, uh, I forget what they call it, but it's definitely, if you got thyroid cancer, I would not get you my thyroid out. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, that, 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 yeah, so you're, and I'm a cancer survivor, you know. But again, I had, you know, I had prostate cancer, and it was it was not... Terribly advanced or anything like that, but they still slammed it shut. My my prostate, you know. Yeah. I, I my doctor last time I went into my urologist for my regular checkup. He did that nice thing of sticking his finger up my butt and feeling the prostate, and he goes, "Oh, good, it's just like it should be after you have those seeds implanted. It's flat." <laughs> and I'm going. I used to have a nice big round. Just healthy, 
use it a lot prostate. I mean, by the time this happened, I just went, you know, I got good use out of it, so I can't <laughs> complain, you know. They're well, don't they say if you live long enough, every man gets prostate cancer? The chances of getting prostate cancer are quite high. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, your prostate, it, it, God sucks, okay? God sucks. Here's why God sucks, because he's supposed to be, isn't he supposed to be perfect? Isn't he supposed to be the all-knowing God, the perfect God, the perfect that's what they say, and yet the human body has uh, got many, many uh, well, shortcomings. Well, this was one of the biggest mistakes he made. And the reason is, is that the prostate, in case people don't know, is a, is a, a, a it's kind of donut-shaped, actually. And your urethra, which men pee through, goes right through it. Okay? So now, as you get older, that prostate gets cranky. Okay? And it enlarges... To the point where you have to pee a lot more because it's not allowing you to let a lot of pee out. Yeah, it presses on the uh, urethra. At at your age, you start having problems peeing. Do you get up in the middle of the night? I pee a lot, yeah. Yeah, that's because your prostate is starting to crunch down on your urethra. Well, that's God's work. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Now, all he had to do was to take that urethra and move it around to the side of the prostate. Exactly, yeah. And and men would go forever. They would pee perfectly and all of that. But no, uh-uh, uh-uh. No, God puts it going right through the prostate. So that's, that's problem number one with the prostate. There are several others, like the fact that the older you get, the larger it gets. Right. And you get benign prostate enlargement. And... Uh, it, it gets larger and larger, and that's why you have to pee a lot at night. So, you know, that's God's work. God's omnipotent. God does everything perfectly, right? <laughs> God made a lot of errors, didn't he? Oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it should be like if you had, if we lose a tooth, if we should just be able to grow another one several times, not just once in our lifetime, you know? Yeah, why, do we, why does it grow back once? But it yeah. can't grow back any number of times. It should be a doc dentist would go, well, I'll pull that, and another one will grow right back in, so don't worry about it. Yeah, that would be perfect. Yeah, but you know how that would impact the dentist industry? <laughs> These guys would go broke. Oh, yeah. We, we, we'll pull the tooth, but then we got nothing else we could do for you. In the medical industry would go broke if they had a cure for cancer. <laughs> they pull a tooth now, they go, oh, yeah, you, know, you better get yourself your uh, an implant. Because yeah, for you, five grand or eight grand, and it, well, it, it's cheaper now. I think it's, you can get it for four grand now. I've seen places. I don't understand this. Correct me if I'm wrong, folks, and and I, you know, I'm probably wrong. But I've seen ads for implants for like twelve hundred dollars. Now I don't know what they're using. They must take jujubes or something and use them as the <laughs> as the fake tooth. You know, I don't understand it, but I've seen some really cheap ones, and I'm going, how do they do that? And they say, we'll do it in one day. How do you do it in one day? To begin with, you have to first, you gotta, you got to, uh, um, you, you got to wait about three months after you pull the tooth, okay? And then you drill a hole, and you put in a post, and then that's got to sit there for like, three to six months, something like that. In other words, all this stuff has to heal up, and then they put in the implant. Well, I, I don't know that uh, uh, that you can do it in one day, but I, I, so I don't know what these guys are selling. That would seem like a rush job, but I don't know. Maybe, they, maybe they've improved it. Who knows? In my case, I don't care, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, I... Um, um, like I have a crown I'm supposed to put in, and the dentist keeps saying you better do it, otherwise it you know could cause more problems underneath the tooth and so on and so forth. And I'm going, yeah, but how long am I going to live? You know, <laughs> suppose suppose I just pay you the two thousand dollars and so on to replace this crown. All right, big deal, okay? Uh, and then the next day I drop dead. That's $2,000 wasted. 
Right. <laughs> you know, oh, you got to get a, 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 an implant. Yeah, but, you know, if I live to be 100 years, I suppose that implant would be a good idea. But I don't know how long I'm going to live. It's like you have that bit about wouldn't it be nice. What was it? Wouldn't it be nice to know uh, when the you, day you're going to die, but not the year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I mean, it'd be nice to know when you were going to die. Then you could amortize stuff. Like I've got a bunch of money sitting in the bank, but I'm going through it very carefully because I don't want to use it all up, right? Right, but if I knew, uh, and if I knew that I wasn't going to die till I was a hundred, I would be very parceling it out very slowly. All right, but that's not the case. I don't know when I'm going to die. So uh, uh, suppose I'm saving all this money right now, and then I never spend it. Hmm. You thought about? Yeah, it'd that be one? nice to leave like a nickel. Well, that is, I, I also max out your credit cards. Yeah, run those up. <laughs> run those up, and then when you die, they take the loss. You know? So, I mean, it's, it's I have no children, so there are no heirs to the Bennett fortune. You know? So, um, but, but we don't know when we're going to die, so we don't know how much we can spend. I see these people, they have, they have ads on TV. Oh, save for your retirement to get a life insurance policy. Yeah... And how long is that going to be? You know? I mean, if I... People have been paying life insurance who are now 90 years old, and they've been paying it every year, paid a lot more money than the person who drops dead at 65, and people inherit that. Right? And they inherit the same amount. It doesn't go up. Yeah, that's one of the big scams, isn't it? Life insurance? Oh, I remember when I was a kid, man. Everybody was trying to sell me life insurance. You want life insurance? I'm 16. Come on, leave me alone. You know, I don't plan on dying anytime soon. Well, you know, you want to save for your... And then you can also sell this in your old age. Yeah, but I can sell it for less than I paid out. It's all... It's a big... It's a, And Marjorie's got this uh, long-term end-of-life policy or something where if all of a sudden during the last three years of her life she has to be put in a home and things like that... This thing will take care of her. And and she's been paying a lot of money out of that for years. And you can't quit it because you might need it now. You might need it, yeah. It's you know, but that's a a big rip off. You know, there are a lot of rip offs. Every time you turn around somebody's trying to rip you off, right, Larry? Every well anything with insurance is usually a rip off. Yeah. yeah. Any insurance. Well, uh, Social Security is okay, you know. Uh, Medicare is okay, you know. But uh, still, insurance policies. I'm going, wow, you know. I got to, I got to pay that kind of money for this, you know. It just didn't make sense. So you, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. But uh, you know, have you got me in your will, by the way? Because you're going in for. Oh well, by the time this has been recorded, you've been in. <laughs> had your operation. Actually, I need to make a will. You're right. Holy Christ. Yeah, yeah. Leave me something. Leave me something, you know. I'll leave you some baseball cards. Yeah, or, uh... cool, cool. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to do with them, but, you know. Do you have any value? Letter. I got a letter from John Kennedy. Maybe that would be good. Oh, do you really? Yeah. Now, it was, do you think he really signed it, or was it like one of his... It was... Uh... He was the first president to use the auto pen, but I wrote him. It was uh, it was two weeks before he got elected. Oh, really? So he didn't. I've got a I've got a picture of it. I'll send it to you. So he couldn't afford an auto pen at that time. I don't know if he had an auto pen when he was in the Senate or not. So. Do you have? Do you, know, do you have you ever had that appraised? Uh, no, but I think it's worth a letter with Kennedy's signature. I think it's worth. At least a couple, three grand, I don't know. Really? Yeah. Because well, I have this postcard from John Lennon. And I once had it appraised years ago at about $25,000. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Now, it's probably not worth that much anymore, but it was then. And I always tell people, too bad I didn't get rid of it. And they go, you get rid of your John Lennon postcard? And I went, 
If somebody want to pay me $25,000 for it, sure. What's it, what good is it doing me just sitting there? Oh, Why would it be worth less? Hmm? It's not gone up in value? I don't know. I really don't know. I, you know, I should take it down to some place like Sotheby's or whatever. And have you them should, look at yeah. It. Yeah, have them look at it and just appraise it for me. You know. And it's like it's a personal card to you. Or better yet, I can go on on Pawn Stars. Have you ever seen Pawn Stars? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can go on Pawn Stars and have them appraise it. You oh. could, yeah, that'd be a great idea. It's only worth three cents. You want to sell it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know why people go on that show because they're going to always offer the least. I mean, you're going to get more money. If you have something of real worth and you go to, like, Sotheby's and say, hey, auction this off. Yeah, exactly. You're going to make more money shop, in an yeah. auction than you're going to make out of these guys on Pawn Stars. Pawn shops are for people who need money quickly. It, is it anymore, or is it just that people want to get rid of stuff, you know? Well, the old days, it was like, you're desperate. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, desperate, yes. Uh, but anyway, so um, uh, you so you you have that you have the Kennedy. What what is what is the the most uh, let's say worth it? See, I've lost command of the English language. There. <laughs> the most with it uh, 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 baseball card you have. The most expensive. I've got a couple of Mickey Mantle cards. that are probably worth three or four grand each. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my friend Shecky has a baseball collection. It's he sounds like collection. he's got the most amazing collection ever. Yeah. But, but he but he never talks about it much. You know, when we talk about his worth, we never talk about uh, his uh, baseball collection, card collection. But I hear it's pretty good. You know. Yeah, I'd love to see it. I know. I'd like to know what he's got. Yeah. Did you uh, did you start collecting them as a kid? I did, yeah. Oh, okay. So you have some that probably worth a lot of money just simply because they're old. They're old, and then when I was in high school in the 60s, I sent away for a couple of complete sets and from the 50s, and I sold those about 20 years ago. For I bought those sets for like $7 and sold them for 4000 But you know what I have? I have a Roy Hobbs card. Roy Hobbs. <laughs> the Natural. That's right, but I do have a Roy Hobbs card. Really? <laughs> okay, so they made the movie, okay, The Natural. And, 1984. And he becomes this big star again, or maybe it's in the very beginning, I can't remember, maybe his rookie card. Uh, they There's a scene where they're rolling these things off the presses of his baseball card. And uh, somebody took one of these. I don't. I think there was only like you know a couple of sheets of this stuff just for movie, for the movie. And uh, uh, he uh, he cut them up and he gave me one. Well, that would be another thing you'd take to Sotheby's. I don't think so. I don't think it's worth much. I, I, as movie memorabilia, maybe, you know. But it's in my uh, it's my my locker in uh, Santa Rosa. So, yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I have a lot of my stuff still in Santa Rosa. I, got, I wish I could just ship it all out here, but then I couldn't fit it all in this apartment. You, know? you got that much stuff? Jesus. Well, I mean, you know, I got a lot of tapes, a lot of uh, videos, uh, uh, a lot of, you know, things like the Roy Hobbs card, a lot of memorabilia. Yeah, I had a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff. Uh, but it's uh, it cost me cost me like uh, two hundred bucks a month keeping it that that's a you you talked about uh, uh, what do you call it uh, uh, insurance being a, a rook mm -hmm. try storage lockers <laughs> really really people buy get a storage locker because they say well temporarily I put everything in a storage locker and then when I move in somewhere I'll grab it and we'll you know. Well, suppose you move to New York and your locker is in California. Are you going to send all that stuff out to New York? No. So, consequently, they're charging you 200 bucks a month for storage that you're going to just have to keep paying for because you don't want them to destroy your stuff. Yeah. 
So they're holding your stuff hostage, essentially. You know, it's it's an interesting concept. I have a friend of mine who works on this uh, network on Gabnet named Damien actually works a storage facility. And, uh, you know, he was nice enough to move all my stuff out of another one that kept raising the price. Every year they keep raising the price. So he took put me in his, which was cheaper. And... Um, you know, thank God for that. He did. I still owe him my eternal gratitude uh, for getting me out of that other place. That other place was costing me like four hundred a month. Wow! And you know, you got to keep paying it. Otherwise, what happens? They use it all up. You know, at at uh, at about round two hundred a month, two hundred and ten dollars a month that I can live with it. You know. Yeah, you got tapes of all the old shows. Yeah, uh, and they on the cassette tapes. Well, I got a lot of those here. They, he sent them out, and I have them, and I've stored them here. But, Do those erode over time or not? The quality? Uh, they can. I, what I've done is I've I've taken a lot of them, made copies of them, and digitized them. Yeah, that would but, be a good but idea. But it's a long, tedious process, you know. So, and I'm I should really do more. You know, I should do one a day, and if I did one a day, which is simple, uh, I could probably get through all of them in my lifetime. <laughs> you got years worth. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of you on there, Larry. I could, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You doing our, your traffic report? <laughs> There's only one problem. I might not have much of you doing the traffic reports. I'll tell you why. Because I had this. I had, we had a system at the station that the tape, the cassette tapes, would only roll when I had my microphone on. Oh, okay. When I turned my microphone off, it would stop the tape. That seemed kind of logical because then it would get all the discussions we had, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, otherwise, I lost a lot of stuff. And I, I give you a good example. We had Tony Bennett on the show from New York City by satellite. Okay, those were the days when the only way you could talk to somebody long distance was by satellite. And he was in a studio in New York, and he was doing a whole bunch of these for a whole bunch of stations. And then he sang with his uh, trio or whatever accompanying him, or his accompanist, sang a song. And it was terrific. It said, I think he maybe did two of them. And uh, I went back to go listen to the tape, and of course I didn't have him because when he was singing, I turned off my mic. Oh man! <laughs> so I never had that uh, Tony Bennett doing, you know, music. So uh, that was that that was that was my great regret. But you know, uh, and and so when it came time to do you, I would turn my mic off. Oh okay. So we don't have much of you. The lost. <laughs> Except uh, there was, I did, uh, towards the end, I started spending money on buying these digital audio tapes. And they had a DAT machine there, and I simply recorded the shows on DAT, which is perfect. They're beautiful. They're digital recordings, and they're terrific. And in those, I think I do have you. Okay. Yeah, so. so but uh, We got to dig those up someday. Yeah, we got to dig those up someday. Got to dig me up someday, I yeah, or, or me. Yeah, I just, I just don't like the prospect of getting old. No. And then all of a sudden, I am old, and it isn't a prospect anymore. But uh, does age? Do you get? Uh, are you afraid of age? Yeah, because just one physical problem after another. Well, look who I'm asking. He, he's the guy yeah. who's afraid of everything. Exactly. Which is why you and I are good friends, because we can... <laughs> the, fear, the fearful brothers. <laughs> the fearful brothers. <laughs> oh, boy. So, anyway, uh, how's the career going? Uh, it's, uh, I'm still working at this advanced age, so... Yeah, well, I mean, you, you, you love doing it. You know, you know, I don't know if I love doing it. I have to do it so I, I make mean, money come in. No, but I mean, do you do you go to do a, a job and say, "I wish I weren't here"? So a lot of times, yeah. Really, just, uh, really. Yeah. Because I've never particularly like some people actually love being on stage, and just uh, I just 
I if keep, it goes I, well, I like it. But if it doesn't go well, I hate it. So. I keep doing stuff like this because I figure it's keeping me alive. You know? Really? Oh, yeah. I just suddenly realize I'm out of work now in radio 10 years. But I've been, for every one of those days, I, you know, or weeks, I've done shows. You've kept yourself busy, yeah. So I've kept myself busy. I mean, not many people listen. You know, I think there are three listening to us right now. <laughs> And and um, I, I you know but but it, it it keeps me active, okay. Yeah. And and you don't want to be inactive, so that's yeah, I don't want to do nothing. So uh. exactly. Well, it looks like slowly but surely we wound down here, and it won't be until what is it next week that people will find out if you'll find out whether I did it or not, w- whether he went and got his hernia operated on or not. <laughs> And uh, I will find out because maybe we won't even be doing something next week. We don't know if he's in any shape to talk. But no. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Larry. I appreciate Thanks, it. Alex. This is Larry B- B- Bubbles Brown, folks. Wave goodbye to him. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its eighth year of talk like you've never heard it before. Yes, okay, thank you, Larry, and uh, Larry hopefully will be, well, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but uh, <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't have his hernia operation, but we'll talk about that next week on why. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You know, at my age, it, all we talk about now are things like, hey, you know, uh, gee, uh, uh, gee my, uh, my hernia is uh, going to be operated on. Okay, good. Terrific. Let me admit some people here. I have to do it one by one because there's one I'm not going to admit right now. Oh, I see. Okay, there are two I'm not going to admit right now because I don't recognize them. One says Nathan Zappel. I don't believe that one. And the other one says Clara Jones. Now, I have no idea who Clara Jones might be. So, um, eh, hello, everybody. How are you? Doing good. Doing good. Doing good. Okay. Shall we try the? Shall we try one of these people here? Yeah, the gamer is on the chat. The gamer is on the chat. Yeah, he said he was on the Zoom call. He's waiting. The Muslim gamer. Yeah. Yep. Gamer. Yeah. Nice to a lot. I have no idea what that would be. Uh, uh, a Muslim gamer? Are you legitimate? Let me see here. It doesn't say. Uh, oh, here comes here comes uh, Jeff Stein. Uh, let's try Clara Jones first. I I don't suspect. Muslim you, gamer. Oh, and here's oh here's Ronnie McNutt. Oh yeah, sure. Oh, something <laughs> going on bad. I I know that one would be not be right. Uh, Nathan Zappel, I don't know. Uh, Clara Jones. Uh, I'm not. I'm not. Ch- I, all of these are all at the same time tonight. Do you trust them, guys? Sounds oh, sure. Oh. Why not? Huh? <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. Why not? Sure. Why not? Okay. Vernon's been tied up in his room for how many weeks because his wife had COVID. So he needs some excitement. You know, that's why he's saying go ahead. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see here. Let's see here. Uh, uh, Clara Jones will give a quick try here, and we'll see if I can, uh, if, uh, yeah, let me see here. Let's bring in Clara Jones. Yeah, try one, and if is, one, it, we'll, we'll see how. <laughs> is Clara Jones, uh, uh, Clara, are you there? Her mic's off. Her mic is off. Hello, Clara, are you there? Oh, this is good. Okay, oh, well, remove that. She said that. yes. Wait a minute. She said yes. No, she didn't. Did she? she said said Clara Jones to everyone. Yes. No. The chat. Uh, forget it. On Clara chat. Jones has been removed. Uh, let's see here. How about oh, Nicker Jones? No, <laughs> 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 uh, well, remove that one. Uh, but my Muslim game. He he. I'm um, Nathaniel. Oh, I'm Nathan. Let me Z- in. Zappel. Huh. Okay. I'm Try Nathan, let me or, in. Yeah. Let let well. Let's see here. I I'm, be nice. Don't say let me in. Say please, Alex. Let me in. Yeah. Well, let's see here. <laughs> Nathan's a pal. Okay. He didn't say Simon. May I? 
Nathan Zappel. Let me see here. Nathan. Oh, yeah. YouTube's not showing everybody. Uh, connecting to audio. Yeah, it's only showing you, Alex. It's only, oh, it's only showing me. Well, maybe that's a good thing, huh? And I, I, I do that often. Yeah, that, that'll keep you monetized Put if this it, guy's the uh, form. Well, remove. <laughs> Is connecting to audio no? Nathan, Nathan, Nathan. Okay, going to remove Nathan. I'm a Muslim gamer. gamer. Okay, well, Nathan, Nathan like you're, you're been, gone. Like you're, go, you're gone. Okay. Uh -oh. Let's try Clara Bye. Jones one more time here. Clara Jones, one more time. Let's see what's happening here with Clara. Okay, I'm ready to get rid of Clara at any moment. I can just do this immediately. Are you there, Clara? Kill all niggas. Kill all niggas. There you go. I know it. Okay, remove. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Oh, my God. Sights I will never get out of my head. Yeah. <laughs> Well, folks, you know, we can't help that. That, that we, We're not going to trust any of those people now. Yeah. Well, Clara Jones, go. Uh, well, yeah. did, did, I get, did I get rid of it pretty fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just saw that replay, yeah. Mm -hmm. well, oh, you went up for about two, three seconds. It went up for yeah. about two, three seconds? Okay. They were just penises, weren't they? Yeah. I don't know. A lot of stuff was moving around. I didn't want to. Yeah. Look. <laughs> yeah, but that, they were just penises, I think. You know, but I. I can... What would be worse? Huh? Yeah. What would be worse? <laughs> no, they're just penises. Well, yeah, because they could have been what? Uh, they could have been buttholes. I think that would be worse. <laughs> and I think uh, I think penises that were masturbating. I think would be a problem. Oh. Wasn't that what it was? I... Yeah. Well, know. you know, I guess we're just not going to trust. You know, I should have known that none of those were right. Okay. Uh, yeah, to have to have like four or five new callers all one night would be. And, yeah. and, and by the way, which one was that? Was that Cleo? Was that Cleo that I let in? Yeah. Cla Clara, Clara Jones. Clara, uh, I'm I'm Nathan. Let me in. Says, Nathan says he's going to report the stream. Though. Yeah, so he's fake then. Yeah. yeah. Gonna... What did he say? <laughs> he said, uh, Muslim says he's going to report the stream. Report what stream? The this stream. stream maybe because you had penises. Because he showed porn for, for two and a half seconds. By the way, which one was that? That's it. You. Wait a you minute. Know, uh, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to tell people how to get on here and do that, but. You know, if people actually listen to the show, they could just put Jeff Stein on and then... No, you know, don't, don't, don't. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> Brian. <laughs> oh. but people aren't listening now. They don't know what they're... They, they just go to a thing and blast. They don't go on it and start watching or anything, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to bring this person in. Watch what happens. But I'm only going to put my face on the screen right now. Let's see? Okay. So that I don't care what they are, right? Here we go. Here we go. Watch. He's so going to no think prayer. that he's getting it on the air, but he's not getting it on the air. Milk so we have good torture to watching it? Huh? Okay, here he is, the Milkman. Are you there, Milkman? Oh, man, this dude's got an Eagle jersey on, bro. That's crazy, bro. God damn. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Yeah, what's wrong with that? That's, that's fucked, bro. Eagles and the Bengals right there in the Super Bowl. Didn't you see I it? Respect the, I respect the Bengals, but I don't respect no damn Eagles. <laughs> well, show us how we respect you and show your face. Show us your hey, face. Show us your face. I respect the Eagles, and I'm a Cowboys fan. Yeah, I'm, the reason hey. you're just seeing me, folks, is that I'm not showing you. I'm on you. the phone, bro, so it's like small as shit. <laughs> yeah, well, okay, enough with your language. Okay, goodbye, and remove. Okay. Uh, let's yeah. uh, listen. Mick, do anybody know who Kevin is? Kevin, anybody? Kevin? Oh, he's probably some 49er. Yeah, he's, nothing. Pro yeah. <laughs> he's probably some Santa Claus wannabe. Yeah, yeah. Hello some, there. Yeah. Uh, you missed it, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I did. You missed a whole bunch of penises. <laughs> yeah. Did I? Yeah. I'll have to watch back again. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze frame. <laughs> yeah, every, frame. That's what I should do every time I have somebody. Oh, let me go back to the uh, uh, Zoom panel here. 
Anytime that I have, uh, Alex Bennett entered the waiting room. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Steve, uh, maybe they left you mm. but They don't know anybody else's name who calls on here, so they... <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to remove Alex Bennett. I'm going to report him to Zoom. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Uh, oh, I only see you on... There you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, what I've decided is if I'm going to try somebody suspicious, I can just put my picture on. Oh, and here comes Jeff Stein. Okay, I think. That's... I would trust that. Now, you just suggested that somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that oh, like... thank God. Oh, there's Jeff. Yeah. 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 Well, let me see here. Uh, and then there's Erica Johnson is trying to get in. What? Yeah. It's... Oh, I only see you. Well, it's not... yeah. What? Big Johnson. Well, what I've decided is if I'm going to try somebody suspicious. Oh, I come can... on, Jeff. Come on, Jeff. No audio, please. I don't think that was Jeff. Yeah, that was, was Jeff. It? Yeah, it was Jeff. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, remove Erica Johnson. Oh, there's Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Pam, Jeff. Pam, we need help. Turn off the browser. Turn, Turn off the, the browser, browser, Pam. Then, then you can go do whatever you want to do tonight. We just need you for the first five minutes of every show, please. <laughs> Adolf Hitler rules. That's the uh, latest oh, one. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. No. yeah. Can yeah. you see these people coming up? No. Uh, no, no. I don't know. No. Okay. Report. You're the only one who can see the waiting room. You can see the waiting room? You're the only one who sees the waiting room. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Brie is on the chat, though. Yeah. Brie is on the chat. Okay. Yeah. Well, B, Brie, if you want. Oh, don't. Uh, I won't say his name. I won't say the name he uses. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because then somebody will try and sign him being that. And, uh, we got... you know, what they should do, I'll tell you what <clears throat> they should do. They should, on Zoom, do this thing where you can't be somebody else. In other words, the name you, you have signed up as should be the name that comes up there. But all they can do is they just keep changing their name, changing their name. Here, mm -hmm. here Here's Pam Smith. Oh, that's gonna be Pam Stein. <laughs> yeah. No, that wouldn't be Pam Stein. That's Pam Smith. Uh, let's see here. I, we're, we're, I'm. Tr I'll tell you. Uh, rather than uh, than do all this, I will just not let anybody that I don't know in tonight. And these people can keep doing it all they want. They can just sit there in the waiting room, waiting, 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 and waiting and waiting. You know. I and I don't care. So I don't have to, uh, they can, I, I, let's see how many different names they come up with. But no, but the, really they should do that on Zoom. If you sign up as Charlie Wallace, then yeah. that should be the only name you can use. Oh, Pam Stein. Just come up. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad Bob Smith has a call tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or, um, <laughs> yeah. Or, or Will, Phil Meyer. Yeah. Or Phil Meyer, yeah. Yeah. We'll be good. We'll be good. Um, and, um, oh boy, you know, it, it just, mm. at, at times I wonder whether it's worth doing, you know? Yeah. You really, would you like to do the show from here on in, uh, 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 Josh? Uh. Ah, just ignore those people. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm just going to let him sit there in the... Uh... Hey, I turned your That's Kevin. 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 Yeah, it's me. It's start... Sorry about that. Hang on. Oh, boy. Tonight, uh, tonight's a little... My bad. It was on another window. I was watching the uh, videos, and for some reason, it auto-played into something else. Hmm. So what, do you, what were you what watching? That? What videos were you watching? I was watching that Tyree videos. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. It, uh, I, I wanted to talk about that tonight because this really bothered me. Uh, mm -hmm. I tune in the, C, the NBC Evening News, and what's their lead story? There might be riots tonight because of what's happening uh, down in Tennessee oh once they God. release the videos. Yeah. Well, you know, isn't this wish fulfilling prophecy? They were yeah. building it up since eleven o'clock this morning. Yeah. Well, I mean, that kind of build up is dangerous, right? And irresponsible of NBC to do. 
okay? Well, and I, all the other channels are doing it. Yeah, but I'm going to blame what's, them because that's who I watch. Okay. What's the hmm? what's what's the point behind the rioting? I, I mean, what well, are they? Well, you know, I think people well, sometimes will riot for any reason. There's no reason to riot right, right here. I'm just saying. I mean, I'm maybe a little bit out of the loop, but I'm just saying, like, what are they upset about? I mean. If I understand it right, a a person was killed by the police, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he stopped okay. traffic violation. Correct. I mean, yeah. And then almost immediately after, all the police officers involved were fired, right? Right. And then very shortly after that, I believe they were all arrested and indicted for right. second degree murder. Is that right? That's Swift correct. Back. Swift action. What, I mean, so what are they mad about that we haven't fucking hanged them yet or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, what's, I mean, that's what. That's everything that you would want, usually. That's Certainly the point. And, and they had the comp press conference today, and the pe family was up there saying everything is going that way, so just stay home. I mean, and, it's like and, and that's the the point, McDonald's because they got your order around, right. And the press <laughs> turns around and says, well, there might be rioting. You better watch it, and da-da-da-da. <laughs> and they were the ones that were doing all the bullshit. If there, are, if there are well, riots, it's gonna happen. it might be 7 o'clock. The videos are going to be released at 7 o'clock, so we don't know yeah. what's going to happen. And the problem is that, you know, these people are saying, don't go out there, don't do anything. Right. And, and, and the press is standing there going, we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's going to happen. Well, right. obviously, they're egging people on. Yeah, they are. They're fucking the stupid. Just stupid. Yeah. And I don't even know what's happening because I walked away from it going, Jesus Christ, what? what why don't you just shut the fuck up? Yeah. yeah. But I mean, I, like so I said, I, waited, I, mean, I just I went to look at the videos yeah. tonight to see what they were. They're atrocious, but you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's what, what they're doing is what they're supposed to be doing. They, yeah, they, I mean, they fired them. They put them to trial. They're going to go to court. Everything that they're supposed to be doing is what they're doing. So what is there to fight, you know, protest yeah. about? And them releasing the videos so quickly. I mean, what else? Yeah, everything was done well, the way it should be done. I, yeah. I think the reason why people riot is not out of d disdain. It, it just seems like they then have a reason to riot. You know, I mean, there are people that tear their towns down when their football team wins. Oh. You know, <laughs> right? But are they? Are they? I haven't read the. I haven't looked at the news. Are they? Are they? Is there an uproar right now? I think I, I saw some headline that came through. Let me see if I have it here. Yeah, and there may uh, not yeah, I mean, I, I guess I was just, you know, like asking if I had missed something. Or it's whatever. a peaceful it's, protest, then fine. Walk through the streets. I and was, uh, that's all. You know, I mean, I seriously thought maybe I had missed something or whatever because I'm thinking, like, you know, like I said, I mean, I don't usually make a scene when they get my food order correct. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what the fuck? But I mean, it, 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 there's no reason for anybody to riot over this. No. Yeah. I mean, the pol the the town took care of it just the way they should immediately. They suspended the cops, as you said, uh, Josh. They they then indicted them. Uh, well, they fired them. They didn't just suspend they them. They fired them. And then them. they yeah. yeah yeah. So I mean, come on, you know. I mean, you can protest the fact that they still have that squad and they should disband the squad. Uh, you can protest the fact that this is going on. That's fine, but don't go out and tear the town apart. Go out and yeah. walk down the street with your sign, and then go home. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everybody, everybody who is following this thing should be happy with the way it's being handled. Yeah. The only yeah. part of it that I don't like, I'm questioning. Okay, the release of the tapes, and here's the reason why: there is going to be a trial. And so everybody on television for the next week are going to be looking at these things like they were, uh, you know, the the last episode of some show they want to analyze, you know, and they're going to analyze it. They're going to analyze it. They're going to analyze it. And that's trying the case out of court. Am I right, Charlie? Am I wrong about this? You were nodding yes. Well, I mean, that, yeah, I... I Think Probably that's what they're doing. Yeah. I mean, I don't see where releasing these tapes is doing the public any good. I think releasing the tapes is doing the Tennessee Police Department and the Tennessee and the Memphis uh, 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 City Fathers uh, a lot of good because they're getting 
positive publicity out of it. But outside of that, I don't see how the public's being served by releasing them. Does anybody disagree with me on that? Yeah, how are they going to have a fair trial? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. In fact, yeah, could, I mean, I, I would say I would consider, you know, probably it's evidence, you know, for example. I mean, I think what probably separates it from like the George Floyd situation, for example, is that that was taken by uh, members of the general public and was outside of the domain of, you know, being controlled by the government as to where this is controlled by the government. And I can understand where the concealment of it would upset people, but. You know, it could be considered as evidence. Well, it is evidence, obviously, or will be. And, and, you know, I think that people should understand had they said, you know, you will see it when it airs at the trial. You know, trust mm -hmm. me, the, the defense has it. The victim's family was allowed to come in and view it. No one is hiding it from anybody, but we cannot release it to the press. Right. Because it's evidence in a trial. I mean, we don't we don't pass the murder weapon around for everyone to take a look at personally do we i mean you know right it gets put in a locker yeah. and we keep it in the locker until well, the trial also or... there is the possibility that a good lawyer could make a case for these people that the case was tried in the in the public well, forum and not tried in, in the courtroom and that uh, they, I'm, they I'm sure that I'm sure that they'll apply for a change of venue when the time comes. I mean, whether or not they get it. What, or not. But, but what in this case, what does a change of venue do? People are being no, seen this not. video all over the country today. Everybody mm -hmm. was waiting to see this. You no. know, they want it. Basically, I'll tell you what the problem is. I wouldn't have shown it just because of those looky loos who'd like to see somebody get the crap beaten out of them. You know, yeah. uh, yeah. and that I don't like. You know, it's that morbid curiosity. Yeah. You know, so what was served by releasing these tapes? I don't think anything, you know, except yeah. to make Memphis look good. Yeah. Well, they were trying to. Police Martin, hmm? specifically. There's two sides of it, yeah. What do you mean? They were, they, trying, they were trying to avoid the George Floyd thing, you know, trying to calm the, the, the seas. But, you know, they're also taking the chance of doing exactly what you said, is they're exposing you know, evidence basically. And, and if you don't expose that evidence, you're going to have them out in the street screaming bloody murder that they won't expose that, you know, they won't show us the tapes and they're going to be out there screaming. And, you know, if you do show it, then you're exposing the evidence. So, mm -hmm. you know, where's the win? Where's the win in that situation? There is no win, but the, there is no, win. but the point is that uh, by showing it, I mean, you're saying that, you know, uh, there'd be a lot of rioting if they didn't release them. Well, they claim there's going to be a lot of rioting because they did release them. Well, you know? that's that's the press side of it. If the press would just shut yeah. the fuck up, well, they, if there's they a, could if probably there, avoid that whole situation. If there's but, a riot tonight, I would blame all the news outlets. Yeah, I would too. Because I watched the press conference this morning, mm -hmm. and, you know, Ben Crum is up there working it. As he always does. Well, he's kind of he's kind of an ambulance chaser. He is. He's in every one of these things. Remember he's been what, out here me, in LA. Remember one thing about Ben Crum is that in many of these cases he makes a lot of money because he oh, does, yeah. he does it pro oh, bono. Yeah, every one of them. He and does. pro bono lawyers usually charge about fifty percent. Okay. Yeah. And like take the George Floyd verdict. Okay. He probably got a nice Ooh. chunk of that of the, oh, of, yeah. the of the of the legal suit. Which most of these cities, by the way, cave in on immediately. Just say how much you want. Here it is. You know. Sure. Uh, but uh, uh, Ben Crum, uh, you know, I don't see him as a big hero. Uh, it, it, today they did have a lawyer for the family that wasn't Ben Crum. Now, yeah, it was I, the Romanacci guy. Yeah, Roman but I don't know that he's not paying Crum back something. I mean, oh, yeah. Crum is very wealthy <laughs> off of his ambulance chasing. So, do you disagree with this, Charlie? No, I mean, I, I haven't disagreed with anything you said so far. Yeah, I mean, the Ben Crum thing. I mean, would you agree with that? I, I don't really. He's he's a lawyer, but like you said, he's an ambulance chaser. He's trying to get a case out of it. Yeah, Marjorie said, I. I, I wonder when uh, when uh, Reverend uh, Al Sharpton announces that he's going to do the eulogy at the 
funeral yeah. for this guy. Yeah. And I said, I think oh, they yeah. already I think they already had the funeral. I was looking and, for him in the background. And, and, and yeah. then, then she said, No, they just announced he's gonna be do, they're gonna have the funeral on Thursday and he's going to do the eulogy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, go. he said that the morning after on uh, MSNBC when he was on the panel. Yeah. So I mean he's always Johnny on the spot for these things too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's the same thing. Remember, Johnny Cochran used to do the same thing. You yeah, know. Yeah. 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 I mean, you get these, you know, lawyers or whatever. I mean, if but they go up and know, they do the same I mean, thing. Like, you know, if if I go to work tomorrow and look at a female wrong, you know, Gloria Steinem might fucking show up or whatever. Yep. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, they, the they have side. these like neat, you know, genre. So, lawyers, where, uh, what whatever. do you th- what do you think of Gloria Allred? She's a lawyer who. Yeah, maybe to, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, is ambulance chasing? Oh, you were you you were saying Gloria Steinem? Oh, yeah, so, I said right. Well, it kind of fits. There's so, so many of them. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, I'm not saying that you know. Uh, but they do the same thing. They hype it up, and you know. The thing that was happening today is I just sat there and I watched it and he's up there, you know, and he's got the whole, you know, justice for Tyree, justice for Tyree. And they're doing the whole yelling and everybody's yelling back. And, you know, that's all fine and dandy. But at the end of the day, the mom got up there and the well, father I, got up there and yeah. said, no, you know, yeah. no violence. I do. No ha- violence. I do have to. It was a Rodney King moment. I, I, you I'll, know? Gi- I'll give him an easy out on this one, Ben Crum, for that thing, for the. Because in uh, in black churches, a very no, I get a that. thing that exists in most black churches, what they call call, call and response. Yeah, it's the it's the, the Baptist thing. Yeah, I yeah. get that. So it, it, that that was really a call and response. But you know doing. that 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 stirs it up, yeah. and and um, you know at the end of the at the end of the thing, the mother and the father both got up there and said don't go out in the streets and stir, you know, well, when the he shit. Sa- when he says, when they say, we want justice for Tyree, well, they're, they've gotten justice already. I mean. And know. they both said that. They both yeah, said, yeah. we love the way things are going right now. At first, he wanted first degree murder. I want the guy hung in the street, you know, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. But I was explained the law. I was explained how it works. I was explained how you know, how things don't go automatically to first degree murder. And I'm satisfied with the way that the lawyers explained how the constitution works and how this is, you know, progressing the way it is. And I'm satisfied with it. And so is the mother and they both agreed with it. So we're going to go the the way that it's supposed to go and follow the justice system. So please don't go out and, you know, stir it up in the streets. And then what do they do as soon as they get off there? Oh, we don't know if there's going to be, you know, fighting in the streets and da 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 da. da. What's going to happen in Memphis tonight after they release the tapes? And da 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 da. Stay tuned. And it's like Jesus, people. Police forces all over the country right now are on alert. Yeah, you know, just because that might happen. But the, the only thing reason- is, it, it could be in L.A. that they're doing this, and they may not have seen that press conference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and they don't know shit. Well, that I actually, go uh, there and turn over garbage cans. Fuck it. Uh, I'm gonna go rob a Best Buy. The <laughs> second degree murder charge is actually that's actually pretty strong. I usually yeah. don't yeah, see that. I mean, that's well. I, I think mean, I think that it yeah. was second degree basically because they didn't kill him on the spot. He was in the hospital yeah. for a couple of days, right. lingering from what were wounds. Right. Uh, and uh, I think that they, uh, oh, look, we have a little elf in our presence. You know, I mean, I think that um, uh, that's the reason for the second degree, that right. you really, if he killed, they killed him right there, and then it would be for maybe first degree murder. Much well, like, no, I, like, I disagree. I disagree with that. In order to prove first degree murder, yeah. you have to prove intent. Yeah. Lying yeah. I mean, they, they, in that case, they would have to show, you know, a clear intent and also usually some sort of premeditation. Yeah. Lying of um, Not a reaction to an unknown, you know, situation or whatever. I mean, in other words, I'm going to kill you tomorrow. And I'm, I made a plan. I went and bought the gun. You know, I, I put it together. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I, a time okay. period of time usually passes, 
usually don't get it in to you and I bumped into each other on the street. We got to fight and I hit you over the head with a rock and killed you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's, it's not, I mean, you know, like first is usually reserved for the most, you know, terrible and pre- premeditated, you know, murder for hire, for example, yeah. which reveals a plot. I mean, you know, so yeah. a conspiracy. Yeah. Or whatever, the first, but, yeah. the first tape I saw, they were, when they pulled him over, they got, you know, into this first scuffle. He, they, you know, they were saying stuff like, I hope we catch up and we're going to beat the hell out of him. I hope they rough that by that yeah. boy up. Right. One of the cops but, up. Well, that, that kind of, I mean, that shows a certain premeditation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but that's but not, it's, I'm going to kill it's him. Typically, but, but it's typically, but it's here the, we are. What are we doing? We're talking about what went exactly. on. Exactly. We're, we're, yeah. we're on right. trial. Yeah. But it's in a, it's in a single event in a heat of passion event, basically. I mean, yeah. it, you know, I mean, I look, think look, I know a long I know period it, of time would have to pass before. It, it, yes, Brian. But but but, but, but let, let's say you're at a bar and you get into a scuffle with somebody and you go home and get your gun and you come back and kill them. Right. I, I mean, mean that sort of that's sort of these guys, you know, chase after them. They lost them for a while yeah. and they come back. So no, but I I think that I think that those I I don't think they thought they was going to die, but but these guys see these movies and video games like you're beating the hell out of somebody and kicking him on the ground his head and thinking that he can just sit there and miraculously he's going to be fine when his his brain is swelling and all this stuff internally i mean my neck's killing me man and I, that guy got kicked in the neck a few times and then you see those slugs that he got and his oh, neck wow. going back i mean that's that's not something that you just okay i'm just going to sit here and recover and i'll be fine Really mm. careful. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, uh, hi, Ray. How are you? I'm I'm good. How are you? Fine. Thank you. No, have you that's se- good. Have you seen the, Have you seen these videos? I, I I haven't been listening. I was in the other room. Oh, okay. what, what? we're talking about the Tyree. Uh, what's his last name? Oh Nichols. God, I heard Tyree it was Nichols. Horrible. Nichols. Yeah, I heard it was and just and the, awful, the, and so I didn't want to watch it. But and anyway. the, Pelosi, the Pelosi tape came out today too. Oh, I yeah. saw that. Wow, that one was. You know, where's Phil and his, like, these guys were, he was coming over for sex and all this stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah, Remember that, the Republicans were saying that that was, like, his gay lover, and his gay lover was over there, and they got yeah, into argument. But you know what the problem is with releasing the tapes? Here, here's here's what the big problem is with it. Uh, the tapes, uh, the v- video of him and this guy at the door, how is Pelosi dressed? Well, but he can't. He's, I'd be in my bed. I know. He's in, be, he's in not his, a button down shirt, but I'd be in my underwear. He's in his underpants, and all yeah. these people who are trying to pass off this thing, because of course he was in his underpants. I'm in my underpants at late at night, too. You know? Oh, we all sleep. Are. Thank you. Right? Yeah, it was like two but, in the morning, wasn't but, it? But they're going to say, oh, that was his gay lover who came over. See? Yeah. See all that we've been saying <laughs> about that, and, you know? You see the video of him with the hammer breaking the, <laughs> the windows exactly. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I mean, did, did you see the part, the aftermath where he, they were on the floor, both of them knocked out? Yeah. And then somebody was snoring. <clears throat> One of them was snoring. Snoring? Yeah. He got knocked out. There's snoring. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you snore uh, after you've been knocked out? I guess you can. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if you're 82. How old is he? 82? 82. Yeah. 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 You know, I also think that there's a, you know, there's a, there's a good case that a, uh, a lawyer can make in the uh, case in uh, Memphis uh, uh, that if you look at it, the guy did get up and run away, you know, and uh, that, I think that really incensed the cops. But I think in the beginning, they were just out of, out of hand, you know, but I mean. And then at the end, they kept saying, oh, the guy must be high. He's got to be high. He's got to be high. But when he got the first thing out of the car, he didn't look high. He didn't look like he was just like losing it and, and, and going crazy. To begin with, if you got stopped by the cops, well, let's ask Charlie, because it more possibly could happen to him than uh, any of us, although it has happened to me. If, if, uh, if um, uh, you were stopped by the cops and they started beating you up like that, wouldn't you start running to get away from it? Well, yeah, if they did that. <laughs> Yeah. Especially considering how I'm very, uh, I, I, I'm very respectful of cops. I never 
call him names. I never it, get angry and say, why are you stopping me or whatever. And it didn't look like he, like, it didn't look like he was being disrespectful either. At one point, I think he was saying, like, let's calm down here, you know. Yeah. Um, but uh, they were, they, they, I think they were just out to, you know, <laughs> do an ass kicking that night. You know? And I think and there's actually a couple times if you see the one the one guy's camera that it goes black for a little bit. Like those guys are taking their cameras off and putting them down so they can't see, even they could still hear. And then you see them putting it back on again. But I think yeah, this was a, a maybe one of their typical ass whippings. And the only reason why we're seeing it now is because he died. I if think it was I, 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 maybe I, we did I, I think what we saw here was something that was a little more of a, a primal kind of situation in which uh, this kind of thing starts and all these other alpha males mm -hmm. jump into the fray. You know, it took one of them to start it and took two of them to get it really going. And by the time they were through, there were five of them who were all in the same mood, <laughs> it, yeah. you know, the same mindset. Well, well this was... Uh, remember that they were not um, typical street cops. They were uh, an organized crime section. Scorpion. Mm -hmm. They were the scorpion. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And this this was body cam footage, right? I haven't yeah. seen it. Yeah. Well, yeah. There was some cam, body cam footage, and then there was a street. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, street yeah, camera. Street, street monitoring. With camera. a body cam, oh. I mean, how stupid are these fucking people? <laughs> well, no, uh, that's you, exactly right. If how you've, stupid if are? You've they? got a body cam <laughs> on you. I think maybe ass whooping is pretty much out of the question. <laughs> That's like stupid. Yeah. I mean, like. <laughs> so they killed. They killed the guy. Did they shoot him, or did they beat him up, or what did they do? Oh, they they beat the pulp out of him. when he was down. Adrian, please. They kicked his head when he was down, and then they were just taking slugs at him uh, while they he was driving keen on steroids. Back and one guy, and you could see the guy's neck snapping every time. It was terrible. Jesus. One one guy got his one cop got his foot hurt or something. He was he limping. Was limping. Yeah, he's he walking around limping like a little bitch. <laughs> Adrian, out of the room, you little bitch. I'm sorry. Because we're talking bad language. Get out. Hold on. I need to take care of something. Uh, you, you're, you're about to see parental abuse of their child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I mean, it's happened the last few times. I just, I don't know, understand. I mean, the body can I don't. What are you thinking? Yeah. I mean, what are you I, thinking? Exactly. I literally, just don't understand. How you don't think you're going to end up on the news? I mean, it's, it's like me saying I'm going to go. Got a camera. I'm no, going to go no. across the street no. and assault my neighbor, but before I do, make sure I record it with my camera. Yeah, roll it. Yeah. Yeah. So everybody I mean, can know what I think. Like next thing, yeah. criminals are going to start recording themselves like breaking into your house and stuff. You know what I mean? Like, well, <laughs> January sixth, these guys yeah. are up there going, "Hey, look at me!" Huh? Exactly. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Live stream on Facebook. Yeah, yeah live stream exactly. <laughs> I'm in the Capitol. Don't you think this? I, I can't believe that there's five of them and not one of them is smart enough to be like, "Hey, man, you know, we fuck kill this dude later." I mean, <laughs> I mean right. I, I mean, it's not even funny. I mean, I really don't understand. No, that. I don't. It's very hard to understand. I mean, but, I, but right. let's take just, one other aspect of this, which makes it very interesting why people would even want to riot, okay? All right? In the black communities. Because these were five black cops. Right. Beating, yeah. beating up on a black guy, you know? Yeah, but cops don't have any color except blue. Exactly. Well, that, that's uh, true. Not, that's yeah. true. But usually, if it were white cops, oh man, it would just be a, a, a field yeah, day. Yeah, we'll that. that's yeah. That's so that's think... one of the things that bugs me. It, I, I mean, it's terrible that this happened, but I, I I can't help but notice that when it's a when they are white cops, that's all we hear. But now that they're black cops, you don't hear anything. I mean, well, if they're I, riding, they're they're riding over the fact that it was a cop. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, uh, it, this it, this speaks larger a larger question of the whole thing about police, and just yeah. the nature of of police departments, which have been insular yeah. organizations that protect themselves, you know, and they think they can get away with anything. Well, that's the point. And that for years they have, by the way. 
And Romanucci was making that point that he wanted that that unit ban, you know, mm-hmm. disbanded. And he was calling for all those types of units across the country to be disbanded, you know, because they are given carte blanche to go ahead and fuck people up, basically. Well, the thing I mentioned to Marjorie tonight was that, you know, this has been going on forever, even back to when I was a kid. OK, I mean, more so then. I mean, the cops could get away with anything back then. You know, it was like a blue code. You didn't rat on the other guy. Well, and, right. You it- know. And, and it wasn't just black people who got beaten up. I mean, when I had hair down to here, uh, a lot of people had long hair were getting beaten up just it because they had hairs, long yeah. hair. Yeah. Um, uh, and in, in this case, um, you know, I understand what black people are saying, but, you know, and after what happened to me in Houston, Texas, and not Houston, in Miami, Florida, with the police down there pulling me over and having snarling police dog uh, uh, barking at me and and holding me for 45 minutes in just sheer terror. I understand what goes on, but I mean, I don't understand it completely because it doesn't happen. Uh, Charlie, how many times you've been hauled over? For nothing? I have probably about 35 times in my life. And what was your crime? Wow. Being, being, being black? Well, I've only gotten four actual tickets, so no. that tells okay. you something. Because when they say, "Do you know what you were doing back there?" You can say, "I was being black." You know, I, mean, <laughs> I would not say that yeah. because I probably wouldn't be here if I had said that. And I bet your parents gave you that little talk, didn't they? Yeah. Yep. You know. So too. we do know that it was more prevalent in the in the black community, but that doesn't mean they weren't beating up on whites and they weren't beating up on long hairs and they weren't beating up on Especially Native here. Americans. You know, I mean. It was just the nature of police departments. Some of these guys joined the police department just so they could beat people up, mm-hmm. you know? And in recent years, they've tried to work the, you know, get those people out of the police department, so, you know. Like Dirty Harry. My, my <laughs> uncle was a, a cop down in L.A. My uncle was a cousin, actually, and mm-hmm. they called him Dirty John for that reason. Really? Because of Dirty Harry? I was Harry? scared shit of him. Oh boy, you know, but, but what the didn't hell? see him much, thank God. <laughs> yeah, I think it's a I think it's a very interesting story. It, it it's just yeah. you know after what happened to uh, uh, what happened to uh, up in Minneapolis, uh, George Floyd with uh, with uh, George Floyd, uh, the cops should have been on notice all over the country. You don't do this. Well, that's the point. You, know, you, you know, don't what do this. People continue to do this shit. Maybe these five guys said we can get away with it. We're black. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think that's. Mm-hmm. I think that's probably something. Yeah, I think that not yeah. not not because they're black, but I think that they're maybe so used to it and they've maybe done stuff and that they they just think that they're not going to get caught. I mean, like somebody but stealing see, or robbing, right? They the think problem, they're not going to get caught. That's all. The problem is, I said that about the guy down in L.A. too, and I said that about another one that I said I went. Don't these cops understand that? They got eyes on them all the time now. Well, you know the thing is, how stupid are you? What made what, what made Rodney King years ago so different was the fact that Rodney King, uh, in those days, there were no body cams and there were no people right. shooting with mm-hmm. you know. Uh, somebody uh, happened to iPhones. have a VCR. Yeah, somebody <laughs> happened to have a VCR and happened yeah, to have and a camera. camcorder. And that's for. and that was the first time that we ever saw one of these beatings go on, yep. Yep. and th- it it really pissed off America to see it, you yeah. know, yep. because yeah. I mean literally, how many guys were there beating up on him? Something like seven, eight. I mean, and there were women too. Really, there were female cops beating up on him too. Yeah, uh, and you know, I mean, what you you know, you're arrested for black while driving, you know. So I mean, it's just it's horrible. Yeah, remember and I, the riots I, I, after that? Yeah, I watched four yeah. two segments of this thing, and I watched the first segment because I I watched these al dot com and they had they had uncut versions of it, and I watched the first nine minutes, and then it went to a second one, and it was twenty nine minutes, and it was mostly no audio on it, but it was after they caught him. And they beat the shit out of the guy, and then they just leaned him up against the car, and they're walking around for 
almost 40 minutes. And he's just laying there, falling over. They didn't, they, they, didn't even, they, didn't even, they didn't even, in that time, did they finally call for an ambulance or they took him in a police car? But they showed hospital? up and they just kept looking at him. And they're walking around and the one guy's limping. And poor baby, he's limping. And they're, they're flashing their lights around looking for something. There's nothing to look for because he didn't have nothing. But they're all walking around and talking to each other. And this guy's, you know, over there leaning up against the car and he's falling over. And he just, he tries to get himself back up. They don't even care that he's there because he's so fucked up he can't run. Mm-hmm. And this is going on. I watched the clock time. The time on it was 20, 2019, I think it was, and at 2057 when I finally turned it off and got on here, he was still leaned up against the car and nobody had done shit to him. While there his was a, brain is swelling in his skull. Yeah, and there was a there was a there was a paramedic there, but they're just looking at him. I can't imagine, yeah. you know. That you 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 know you're just driving home or wherever he was going, and you figure you're going to get to your destination, and tonight you're going to watch a little TV, and maybe you'll go to a movie, or you'll uh, you have a girlfriend, you're going to get it on with your girlfriend or something. He was going home for dinner. Going home for dinner, and at that point, your life is over. I mean, you know, and you were just going home to dinner. You know, that was all. I mean, that's the crime of it all. Yeah, he, he said, worked this, at FedEx. That this person can't be allowed to live out the rest of his life because of the, the just the, the horribleness of, of a group of people, you know. And and this was a crowd mentality. You got to remember that this is a mob mentality. <laughs> they wound up all beating up on him. How this many- is kind of what I you know mm-hmm. what I think about that particular unit, the Scorpion unit. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there was some. You know something to that scorpion unit, and there's yeah. probably a lot of them around the country like that, that have this carte blanche saying, "Go out and get them. Whatever you got to do to get them, go get them." Yeah. And it said on the back of his shirt, "Organized Crime Unit." You know, but they're still got body cams. Well, and well, I think I think the, I think the job is to stop crime, not to add to it. Yeah, but you know. but. You know, you know, he's going to pull somebody over on a traffic stop. You know, the guy don't have a ticket book. Yeah. What's he going to write to do? Write a ticket? An organized crime guy going to write a ticket? Yeah. I don't think so. Well, I don't want to judge. Uh, yes, Ray. Yes. I just wonder. I'm sorry, but why did they pull him over? I, what they was said it? he was trying to take off. They no, they thought he was driving drunk or something. Driving erratically. Driving Erratic. erratically. Yeah. Oh, I see. So they were going to check. But for there's no proof of that, alcohol. according to the chief of police. Oh, I see. So they could have made that up after the fact. Probably, yeah. We yeah, don't yeah. Know. Well, listen. I, I had a cop. Well, let's that. let's look at the evidence. Yeah, I had well, a cop do that to me after. Well, the after. minute the minute he ran, <clears throat> he was in a lot of trouble. Okay, that it was not going to turn out right. well because how dare you even question our authority? <laughs> right. You know? yeah. After he got tased and after he got maced. Believe me, I would run. I mean, come on. I want, I'd want to get away from there as fast as humanly possible. The only thing is he should have, like, run into somebody's house and said, help me. I'm being chased by the cops who What's are... What's weird is it looks like there's somebody sitting, leaning up against their garage door across the street, and I can't tell if there's somebody sitting there watching the whole thing or not. Yeah. But I can't, you know, can't tell because of the image. Yeah, they, they said he was uh, like very close to his mom's house. I don't know. They said a hundred yards or whatever. So yeah. he was definitely running his mom's. But but what about the Keystone cops? Those guys kept kept spraying each other, pepper spraying each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, he, that yeah. one kept both both both, both spots. The guys kept trying to clean each other's eyes out uh, because uh, they again a, again again a pussy move. Yeah, you know, yeah, he's got. Oh my eye, my eye's got pepper spray. Now, what do you think happened to uh, what's his name? The guy in this situation. The Tyree. only thing they didn't do was shoot him. They used pepper spray. They used the taser. They used the the baton. They did everything except for you know, hold him up and one guy punch him. Besides, shoot him. Yeah, yeah. held him up and beat him with the baton. Because that one guy came over with the bat and just started. Yeah. Yeah, I that, just, I just that, don't understand. You know, I just don't under. It has to be a mob mentality. <clears throat> I mean that you know, one guy starts, another guy joins in. Before you know it, they're all in a frenzy. They're all having their kicks in. You know, because there is no rational reason 
why this guy should have been beaten up like that. There were yeah, five cops there. I think at one point, six or seven cops there. I counted eight at one point. Yeah, eight? eight? Okay. And there may have been two. There I, may have been I'm sorry. Four. He's been... not a threat to anybody. Yeah, two might have been firemen, but there was there was no movement by the guy because he was leaning up against the car. Yeah, two yeah. firemen were suspended also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't or doing anything. I don't Ooh. see why they shouldn't have been suspended. Failing to render aid. Yeah, they were just standing there looking at him. Yep. Yes, they had their bags sad. right there. So, I mean, right. what, what do we do to, you know, this it keeps happening and it keeps happening and it keeps happening. When are we going to, when are we going to say enough is enough? You know, and when are we going to say maybe, maybe that has to be some revamping of police departments in this country and, and huge investigations to figure out why these things happen. Uh, you're gonna get everybody start talking about defunding again. Here we go. And, and, yeah, I know, but that's a bad phrase to that's say. Just I mean, bad that's just bad marketing. Not, yeah, it's not defunding. You know, it, it's no. back, going back to Ray Hurd. I even heard one guy say, "Why don't we re-interview everybody?" So it's like if you have somebody you trust up top, which maybe that yeah. person's corrupt, but go in and re-interview. Go do background checks and make that's sure. That's what that, happens when you screw up at a job. Yeah, exactly. Well, I I often said that you use the term reappropriate funds. Not mm. defund the police, but rather look at their budgets and where their budgets are are aimed, and use the money more efficiently to make more efficient police departments where this kind of thing doesn't happen. Like these, but, units. but I don't know. Okay, I don't know if you can prevent this kind of thing from happening. And I'll tell you why, yeah. because it's the line of work that that attracts these kind of people in the first place. You know, We've had this if, you're a bad cop, if you're a bad cop in one police department and you get written up or you get fired or something like that, you can go across the country and, and get hired at another police department That's because right. they don't know about all the bad stuff you did before. That's right. That's right. Had a cop that shot Tamir like Rice got rehired in another police department. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, the 12 year old kid with the toy gun that yeah. they, they pulled up in two seconds and killed him. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's working as a cop somewhere else now. I, I, you know, I don't know if there are any laws we can pass to do it, but we can pass laws to for police departments to reassess their entire procedures, you know, <clears throat> and and to make sure that only the, you know, that they really are able to weed out crazy people or people who were there because they they want they have a Wyatt Earp syndrome, you know, <laughs> or as I think uh, Alan last night called it, not Wyatt Earp, uh, John Wayne, John Wayne okay. syndrome. Uh, you know, people who come in with that kind of attitude, I know the police departments try to weed them out, but you really can't, you know, because what, who's going to be attracted to being a cop? Why would, would any of you want to be a cop? Why, why wouldn't you want to be a cop? Because of the nature of the work, you wouldn't want to be a cop. But who people would be a midstream too? What? People change midstream when they start seeing all that shit every day. Yeah, they're they're getting up against this crap, and they don't have any control about what, how fucked up the world is when they're going and and dealing with that stuff every day. They they start to lose it midstream. I'm going to tell you where I think police work went wrong, and I've said this for years, and I will continue to say it till the day I die, which could be any week now. Okay, that being the case, here's the problem: mm -hmm. uh, you have got to have a situation. Uh, now I forgot what I was going to say. I, I, the, my lead up was so strong <laughs> that I the forgot what review I was going to say. Yeah, that that, uh, that the oh god, that the police, where policing went wrong. Yeah, where policing went. Oh yes, okay. Thank you very much. That kicked it off for me, and I'll start talking before I forget. When I was a kid, where did you see the cops the most? On the street, on the yeah. beach. That's right. Walking the, walk the beach. That's right. Where don't you see them anymore? Walk Never the walk in the beat. Yeah. In car. Because walking the beat, cops usually lived in that neighborhood. Okay. People knew them. They knew the people in the neighborhood. They walked around talking to them every day and knew the people in the neighborhood were good people. Then all of a sudden we start to have cops going in cop cars. And when's the only time they get out of a cop car? When there's an issue, when there's donuts, a, when there's donuts, donuts or when there's a problem, or when yeah. there's a problem, and so or change the shift. 
Yeah, but I mean, they Paperwork. usually the only time they get out of the car is when there is a problem. And they get an attitude about the whole world outside of that cop car mm -hmm. because they don't have any input otherwise, where when they were walking the beat, they did. The, am I wrong here? No, but you're not wrong. That, shouldn't we put and them back? Hmm? And to that point, they commute into town that they work in. Yeah. So they drive out. They never see anybody that they go. They don't go to the grocery store, and they see don't see the people that they run into right. all the time. So right. they go. They drive fifty miles back home, so they don't have to deal with any of those people that they're, you know, dealing with during the day on mm -hmm. their job. Yep. Whereas before, you know, when you went to the store, you might be off duty, but you're still so the cop. I, so I think what we're saying here is we probably. <laughs> should uh, put cops back on the beat and make sure there are cops who live in that neighborhood, you know, because yeah, that, that'd be nice. But isn't that the it's answer? All, it's all about if they could salaries. afford it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's part of the salaries. problem. Yeah. You know, just, a lot of these places are either you don't want to live there or it's so expensive. You can't live there on the salary of a cop. Uh, just, and it, what it, happens here is people come in here and they'll, they'll learn to be a cop and then they move and they go to another city that's more expensive, that pays better. I, I've been, yeah. I've, I'm almost running out of time, but I watch these videos on, uh, mm -hmm. on uh, YouTube of, uh, the, the uh, smallest departments in New York city. Okay. And I look at them and they go, and this is a small part and it's like a shoe box. Right? Mm -hmm. It's twenty two hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. A one bedroom mm -hmm. is four thousand. I'm going, boy, mm -hmm. I must I must have been a, I went through all these years of fighting for this apartment that I didn't know what other apartments are going for. You know, so if you had somebody come into the city and have to live in the neighborhood that he was a cop in, I think the city would have to probably give him rent money. They yeah, always yeah. said the third of the population of this town that I live in here. Mm -hmm. is San Jose cops. So if we ever had an earthquake or a major disaster, they'd all be here. Because <laughs> really? they have to report to the local office. Wow. I didn't start. I We've didn't got, you know, 15 that. cops in this town. Then we'd have like 300. <laughs> you, know, you know, most of the San Francisco firemen live in Novato. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Son of a bitch. Okay. Well, Because they can't afford to live in San Jose or whatever. Yeah. 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 Well, anyway, uh, we're, you know, no matter how much we talk here, we're not going to solve mm -hmm. the problem. It's got to right. be solved by these cities. It's got to be solved by people who care about, you know, policing and how police are handled and how they handle things. And I don't know. maybe I don't, like their yeah. pre exam test, you know, like true or false, you know. When wearing a body cam, I should not fucking beat people up. True or false? You know, like, <laughs> man, know, man. True or false? Short of death. Are they, are, like, <sighs> Vernon has his hand up. Yes, Vernon. False. Last word, Vernon. Our our city our city is under investigation yes. because of the Brianna, Brianna Taylor murder, yeah. and one of the things that the police department is doing now is that they are hiring people as advocates. So when police are called on domestic disputes and things like that, there's somebody on the scene who is there as an advocate to more, uh, more of an attempt to uh, downplay violence mm -hmm. and, and, to, and to try to mitigate violence and, and downplay and cool things off. Until, that, until, until one of those people gets shot. Well, yeah. I mean, so far yeah. it seems to be well, working, yeah. but there's, there's, the city's also been flooded with guns. Okay. And, you know, there was a shooting yesterday well, less than I'm a running, mile I'm, from my house. Yeah, I'm running out of time here, unfortunately. But thank you, Ed Vernon. Good way to end the mm -hmm. program. Uh, Josh, thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Josh. Uh, thank you, uh, Vernon. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you uh, to Brian and his... Uh, little marionette that came in for a special visit uh uh 49 go niners. 49ers okay go niners, hey, go niners. Hey, niners. Philly. Go and, niners. and uh <laughs> thank you jeff and thank you ray good seeing all of you give a big wave goodbye and i'll give a big wave goodbye at you okay there they go folks that's our citizen panel for tonight uh and we'll see you again on let's see here monday monday folks at uh, 4 o'clock on Facebook for the pop-up show. Then we'll be back 
here next uh, next Wednesday. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye. <laughs>